Hey, this is Denise from Fully Fleeced, and today we're going to do some carding. So we've got this fleece that has already been sheared off the animal, of course, and uh, washed, and uh, picked a little bit, uh, but mostly it's just sitting here in its washed state. Um, and so I'm going to talk about the next stage in a wool processing pipeline. This is my Pat Green Carter. I'm not sure exactly what model it is, but it's a hand crank guy, and it's probably an older Carter. Uh, I got it second hand and it serves me very well processing a bunch of fleece. Um, so the first thing that you need to know about carding fleece is that uh, once the fleece is washed, for the most part it's going to retain a little bit of a lock structure. You can still see there's a lot of tips here. The fleece is still sometimes a little bit bunched together at the butt ends. And before you can feed it into the carter, you really want to make sure that it's um, separated out. So this is what we call picking. Uh, oftentimes, it in the commercial wool processing, it exists as a completely separate step in wool processing. I tend to just kind of do my picking as I'm getting ready to put the put the wool through the carter. Um, if you're in a hurry, it's it's easy to uh, not do the picking thoroughly enough, in which case it's going to result in making it a little more difficult to feed through the carter, cause you a little more trouble with cranking it through, putting unnecessary pressure on your machine. So it really is a good idea to, to try to pick apart your fleece very thoroughly and to try not to feed in too terribly much at the same time. So we want to just be feeding in a little bit at a time so that our feeder drum can pick it up and distribute it nicely onto the larger drum. My carter doesn't have one of those liquor brush things on it to keep fibers down. I find that I can use my little uh, flicker brush to uh, smooth down the wool as I'm applying it to the large drum. Kind of helps just uh, pack down the fibers and smooth out the top. So we'll keep picking the place apart, feeding it through, cranking it around, trying to apply it evenly to the larger drum. that this carter can usually accommodate about an ounce or an ounce and a half of fleece depending on the texture per bat but I don't really weigh it as I'm going along I just kind of try to get a sense on the larger drum of how thick the fiber is accumulating on there you can kind of tell that from the seam where the carding cloth is attached and fixed down to the drum So that's probably enough right now for demonstration purposes. So now you want to take uh, some sort of implement to remove the, the wool from the large, large drum of the carter. All you really need is something to get under here and loosen up these fibers so that you can pull them off just at the point where it comes together. That seam makes it easy to get a hold of and loosen up these fibers so we can peel them off the drum. And then once we've got an opening, we can just start peeling it off the drum, back like this, wait for it so you can see better. You don't need to wind it onto anything, into a tube, or just winding it, pulling it off. It all wants to stay together because wool clings to itself. So there's our first pass uh, bat, and for processing raw fleece, or uh, not raw, washed fleece, I find that it generally benefits from a 
second pass through the carter, the first time doesn't necessarily get the fibers entirely separated. You might still have some tips clinging together or even some small bits that you can pick out as you go. That'll help improve your spinning experience a little bit later down the line. When you're refeeding the fibers through the second time, you'll find that you get a better result, your more separation and better blending of the fibers if you take your battle line like this and feed it through sideways. It's going to pull those fibers one from another that are sitting next to each other and realign them anew on the, the big drum. It's going to give you a better, better result. And the second pass, again, gives you an opportunity to pick out any little weak tips or things that are going to get in your way when you're spinning it. And that's looking like a pretty smooth preparation. So we just go through the same thing here again, kind of getting a hold of these fibers. And some will, will pack onto the carding uh, cloth a little bit harder, a little bit uh, more firmly than others, depending on the texture of the crimp, if there's any grease left in it. So it can make that either easier or harder to kind of get those fibers loose when you're done. And so then here is our final second pass carding, carded bat. We can just wrap it up into a little muffin and store that away to be either blended or spun from later.